Welcome back to the Real Solar System mod in Kerbal Space Program, where today we will be sending four Kerbals to the surface of the moon and bring them back home to Earth. After my last RSS video, there have been a bunch of requests for a new one, and also as a thank you for reaching 1000 subscribers on the channel, you will get just that. And this right here is the rocket that will send four of our Kerbals to the surface of the moon. The rocket is called the... Um... Wait just a second. The rocket is called the Iberic Star, and we will be launching two of them today. Its first stage consists of five F1B engines and two massive solar rocket boosters. Its second stage is powered by four J2X engines, which will be carrying either the lander or the crew module. The lander, which can carry four Kerbals, will have four Apollo descent engines on the first stage and two AJ-10-190 engines on the second stage. The crew module, which can carry seven Kerbals, is powered by four AJ-10-190 engines. All right. You've waited long enough. It is time for the launch. And there we go. We have liftoff of the first of two Iberic stars, this one carrying the lander. We will send this lander into orbit around the moon, and then later we will send the crew to dock in lunar orbit. Right now we are approaching booster separation, as there they go, and they will now fall back down into the waters of the coast of Florida. As we continue our ascent up into space, we need to watch our throttle as it has a minimum limit of 71%, and if we accelerate too fast, the entire rocket can just disintegrate, which isn't really something I want. But luckily the stage of highest propulsion is now done, as we have stage separation and we ignite the four J2X engines on the second stage. The fairings have been jettisoned, and soon we will cut off the engines for a small coast before reigniting them for Earth orbital insertion. So there we have Seco 1, and we will now coast up to Apogee, which is when we relight the engines. And after a couple of seconds of firing, we will once again cut off the engines, and we are now in low Earth orbit. Awesome! So now in about one orbit, we can light our J2X engines for one final time for translunar injection, which we need to do in this specific window, because otherwise our fuel will boil off. And that is engine ignition for the Iberic Star second stage for one last time, and this burn will actually take very little time compared to the Saturn V. The translunar injection for the Saturn V was only 6 minutes, and the TLI for the Iberic Star is only 1 minute. And let's be honest, that's probably only because I don't care about snapping my Kerbal's necks due to G-forces. Anyways, back to the important stuff, because we have the final cutoff of the second stage, and separation of the lander. It will do a little correction burn en route to the moon, but after a few days, here we are. The lander will actually do lunar orbital insertion, because the second stage obviously doesn't have enough fuel for that, and even if it did, it probably would have boiled off by the time it got here. So we are just moments away from a lunar orbit, and there we go, we've done it. The lander is now in a safe orbit around the moon, and the first of two launches is now complete. So now that the lander is in orbit, we need to send the crew. And for that, I cooked up a little something, which in my opinion, is pretty awesome. You know, with this music in the background, I'm sure some of you will get that reference. Anyways, go for launch. So there we are, in orbit around the moon. We will be transferring a slight amount of fuel from the crew module into the lander, and four of our seven Kerbals will enter the lander and get themselves ready for undocking. As there they go, and now the two separate spacecraft are floating away from one another in preparation for landing. 
In just a moment they will deorbit and start their very long landing burn and hopefully eventually land. And if they do, we'll be halfway done with one of the hardest missions on my channel so far. Here we go. We have landed on the moon! You know, considering that the last time I barely got into LEO, I am very happy with this. So we have four Kerbals here who are all pretty important to my road to 1k, starting off with Marvin. Marvin was the person who kept me motivated all this time, even when the channel was doing very horrible, and to this day we give each other feedback on every video. Without Marvin I would have never reached 1k, and even outside of YouTube we are really good friends. So please check out his channel in the description, his videos are awesome and if you like my videos you'll sure as hell like his. Then secondly we have Noel, who was one of my first subscribers and the very first member in my discord server. Noel was also the person who asked me to make my discord server in the first place, so there's that. He's a big fan of airplanes and he is also a good friend of mine. Then we have Triton, who together with Werner von Kerman, who is also flying on this mission, has helped me out a lot for my previous video in terms of cinematics, and he also is a longtime member of the Discord server. Then lastly we have Derpy Draco, who is one of the staff members in the Discord server, and he has the most roles out of anyone in the server, and he is also a longtime member. Now Marvin will do the honors and plant the flag on the moon. There we go, that is beautiful. So all the Kerbals will quickly line up for a screenshot and will soon get back into the lander, which was actually quite a hassle because I forgot that the gravity on the moon is different than the gravity on the moon. So I just did not have any ladders on there and the only way to get on board the lander was by first jumping on the storage bay of the landing legs and then jumping onto the command pod. And when getting Marvin into the lander, I actually broke a solar panel, which wasn't exactly ideal. But eventually we got there and we were ready for departure. So, after waiting for a good time to launch, we did just that, and we lifted off of the surface of the moon. We used the first stage of the lander for a little while, but then we had to separate and use the second stage to continue on up into orbit. When we reached orbit, we did a few intercept maneuvers, and then we once again arrived at the crew module. Once we were docked, we transferred both the crew and all the remaining fuel from the lander into the crew module. Once it was time to depart, we undocked from the lander and we fired our engines for one last time. So we are now approaching the Earth's atmosphere and our final moments of this trip to the moon and back have arrived. In RSS the atmosphere of Earth starts at 140 km, but I think we'll really start feeling the heat at around 100 km and we will be smashing into the atmosphere at nearly 11 km per second. To put that into perspective, at that speed you could cross the whole United States, LA to New York, in about 6 minutes. And now we are really starting to feel the heat of re-entry, as plasma is engulfing the capsule and the crew is reaching up to 7 g's of deceleration. And now we have finally slowed down enough that the crew can relax and be fairly confident in their survival. And now the parachutes have deployed and in a few moments they will be back on their home planet. As now we have splashed down and we want to welcome back the 7 bravest Kerbals we have in our possession.